talked about sharpening and putting a good keen edge on a blade using a secondary bevel, but we haven't really talked about what you do if there's a problem with an edge. When the, the secondary bevel has gotten too large and you can't get the speed that you were trying to get. If it's grown, it takes longer to polish. If you've got a nick in a blade and you need to eliminate that nick, you need to do some extra work. Now, we don't recommend using an electric grinder because it's very easy to overheat a blade and take the temper out. And most people don't have any idea what the temperature is at which you actually draw a temper out. If you get over 340 degrees, you're going to be taking the temper out of the blade and making, creating a weak spot in that edge. If you're looking for a, a color, whether it be blue or black or even a straw color, you're going to find that that's a temperature of close to 600 or 700 degrees. So there's a large range of temperature there where you don't have a visual cue that you've damaged that edge. It's almost impossible to do that on sandpaper. I've got four grits here in front of me. I go from 80 to 180, 220, and 400. I may not use all those grits at any time, but I like to have them available, so if I've got to do some coarse, heavy work, I've got the heavier cutting paper there. But I want to progress up through some of my finer grits so that I'm keeping a nice flat surface, and I'm also working through scratch patterns. It makes for more efficient removal of material. If I've got a nick in an edge, I don't want to do, remove all that material just from the face, from the bevel on the blade. So I'm going to square off the tip of the blade. I'll put my paper down. And I'm not going to use the coarsest grit at this point because I do too much shaping. It's important that the tip of this blade stays square. Otherwise, I'm not going to get an accurate cut. I can give myself a mark on the back of the blade with a sharpie so I know how far back to go to get rid of the, the nick. <clears throat> now I'll just hold that square and if you're not comfortable with this you can put a block in here, maybe a two by two square block to hold that square. And just drag that back. I also like to change the tip that's leading so that it's not as likely to skew. Check it periodically as you go so you know what you're working with. And I'm working through each grid so that I can keep a much straighter line on the tip of the blade. And I've gotten back past the nick and I've got a nice square edge to work off of. So when I next go to rework the face of the bevel to eliminate this large secondary bevel, I'm going to go to my uh, stop board and I've got a preset stop angle that will match my primary bevel. Now it may not be exact, but it's going to be very, very close and I can work it back in as I go. Again with a sharpie, if I mark the bevel, I'll see where I'm removing material. Just give me a gauge of where I'm at. I'm a little bit steep, but I can work that in quickly. The other thing that you want to look at is right at the very tip of the blade, there's a flat that I created on the face. 
I'm going to be working on the sandpaper on the bevel side until I've eliminated that entire flat. Because I've got some heavy work to do, I'm actually going to bring in my 80 grit paper. Now the majority of my pressure is on the draw stroke. On the push, the paper has a tendency to flex away from the blade and you can round things off. After a number of strokes, say 10 or 15, you'll find that you've created a scratch pattern and it's advantageous to jump up in grit to remove material more quickly. <clears throat> but also, as I mentioned at the beginning, it helps you keep a flat surface. If you do everything on one grit, you have a tendency to round or crown the face of the bevel. Just keep cycling through those grits. And as the paper starts to wear, you'll want to switch it out. Paper's getting a little worn, so I'm going to swap that out. checking for the burr and I can't quite feel it so I'm getting very very close. I've just about eliminated all of the, the flat on the tip and I'm about ready to go back to the stones. Just double check for square. I'll do a couple more passes but I'm not going to work at the 80. I'm just going to be working at the finer grits. I now have a chisel with a nice square end and a flat, clean bevel. It's ready to go back to the stones for the final honing. If I've got a plain iron that I need to work, the process is the same. If I've got a nick in the edge, or I just might have a slight skew from prior sharpenings, I could square that off in the vertical position on the sandpaper. If all I need to do is get rid of a wide secondary bevel, so that I can get back to the speed and quickness that I get from secondary bevel sharpening. I drop in the jig, find the primary bevel that the, that's on that particular blade, and go straight to the sandpaper. If I have to do a lot of removal, I'll start at 80 grit. If I don't, I might start at the 180 and then have 180, 220, and 400. Once I've brought down this, the primary bevel to the point where I've just about eliminated the secondary bevel. I shouldn't feel a burr on the back and I'm ready to go back to the stones and it'll be just as fast as it was the first time I sharpened. If you've ever done this process with an electric grinder you're going to find that this doesn't take any longer and the advantage is you have a lot more control. It's a lot easier to keep a square edge. You get a lot more flat in the, surface, the bevel side itself. If you've worked on a grinder, you know that it's very easy to come out a square and then you've got to spend some extra time to correct that. The real danger though is in overheating the blade because if you overheat the blade, you're going to get a weak point in your cutting edge. This gives you speed and accuracy and I think you're going to find it's a lot easier to do than working off of a grinder.